In this video, you will learn how to digitize a cutwork design. You can use an image in the background to digitize cutwork, or you can just use the digitize whole icon in the cutwork and stumpwork toolbox. Select the image and right click and select lock. That will prevent you from accidentally moving the artwork. When you select digitize whole in the cutwork and stumpwork toolbox, whole is selected by default in the docker. There are many types of cutwork that can be digitized. You determine the type of cutwork by selecting the components that you want in the docker. You can pre-select the properties of the cutwork or you can edit them after digitizing. Let's first digitize a hole with a decorative stitch around the edge. For stabilizing runs, certain types of fabrics, those that ravel, for instance, you may want to increase the distance of the stabilizing run. You can just click on the up arrow to increase the distance of the stabilizing run from the cut edge. Cutting line will use cutwork tool as check. Optionally place stabilizer, remember, will let you place a stabilizer behind the hole after it is cut. The stabilizer gives the hole in the fabric stability, and it is important especially for larger holes that you'll be digitizing. The stabilizer can be a wash away stabilizer that will disappear after the design is completed by rinsing it in warm water. Or it can be a sheer fabric placed under the hoop after the hole is cut. Tack Down Remember secures that stabilizer to the cut fabric. We'll leave this as default. By default, the Tack Down Run stitches directly on top of the outer stabilizing run. We're going to uncheck Net Fill for this first type of hole and select a stem stitch as the type of embroidery around the edge. Next, just do left clicks around the shape. Press Enter to activate, and you can see that a stem stitch has been added around this cut hole. For the next type of cutwork hole, let's choose to add a net fill. Again, you have all the same parameters that you can either leave a default or you can change. We'll place a check mark by net fill. You can change the distance that the net fill is from the cut edge. Notice again that it is the same distance as the tack down, and it would be the same distance as the outer stabilizing run had I not changed the amount. The spacing will change the distance the stitch lines are from one another. The angle, of course, changes the angle of the net fill. We'll just leave these at default. Let's change the type of embroidery to a satin stitch. If you wish to change the width of the satin stitch, you can open Object Properties and enter a new number, and I'll do 2.5 millimeters, and click OK. Again, we'll use left clicks around this shape because it's all straight lines. Press Enter to activate, and you'll see that I have a net fill with a satin stitch edge. For this center diamond, we'll create a raw edge hole. Place a dot in front of raw edge, and notice that the components have changed. We'll leave a stabilizing run, but if you don't wish to have a stabilizing run, this can be unchecked. Notice that you have more choices for the embroidery type with a raw edge hole. We'll choose zigzag, and then we'll leave the cutwork tool checked. Four left clicks and enter, and we now have a cut line within the hole, and it is going to cut after the zigzag stitch. To remove the underlay from the zigzag stitch, click on Object Properties in the Cutwork Border Docker, select the Effects button in the left corner of Object Properties, uncheck Underlay, and click OK. This removes the underlay from the zigzag stitch. Hide the bitmap. We've Since we have multiple cuts, in Color Film, select the cuts, holding down the Control key, and click on Combine Selected. The design has been changed for a more efficient stitch out. Stitches that need to be stitched prior to the cut are moved into first position. Then the cut lines occur. In this case, there are only two positions and the cover stitches are moved to the last stitching position. 